Learning Theories of Piaget, presented by Annie Collette. Jean Piaget was born August 9, 1896, and died September 16, 1980. He was 84 years old. Piaget is known all over the world and is still an inspiration in fields like psychology, sociology, education, economics, and law. His studies and research are very well known, especially in the education system. His researches had one unique goal. How does knowledge grow? The growth of knowledge is a progressive construction of logically embedded structures by a process of inclusion. Children's logic and modes of thinking are initially different from adults. Piaget took ideas from biology, psychology, and physiology, then investigated the method by which children learn about the world. He based his conclusion about child development on observation and conversations he encountered. He would ask questions about simple problems he had devised he then would shape a picture of their way of viewing the world by analyzing their mistaken responses. He formulated and integrated the theory of cognitive development. Much of Piaget's interest in the cognitive development of children was inspired by his observation of his own nephew and daughter. He proposed that intelligence is something that grows and develops through a series of stages. Process of cognitive development starts with a schema, which describes both the mental and physical action involved in understanding and knowing. Schemas are categories of knowledge that help us to interpret and understand the, not the world. This includes both a category of knowledge and the process of obtaining that knowledge. Assimilation is the process of taking in new information into our already existing schemas. The process is somewhat subjective because we tend to modify experiences and information slightly to fit in with our pre-existing beliefs. Accommodation is another part of adaptation that involves changing and altering our existing schemas in the light of new information or experiences. Equi equilibrium is a balance children try to achieve between assimilation and accommodation. As children progress through the stages of cognitive development, it is important to maintain a balance between applying previous knowledge and changing behavior to account for new knowledge. Equilibrium helps explain how children can move from one stage of thought to the next. Four stages of cognitive development start with, starts with sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete, and formal operation. The sensory motor stage starts to develop from birth to two years. The main achievement during this stage is object permanence, knowing that an object still exists, even if it is hidden. It requires the ability to form a mental representation of the object. Pre-operational stage is developed in ages two to seven. During this stage, young children can think about things symbolically. This is the ability to make one thing, a word, or an object stand for something other than itself. Concrete operational stage is developed in ages seven to 11. 
Piaget considered the concrete stage a major turning point in the child's cognitive development because it marks the beginning of logical or operational thought. This means the child can work things out in their head. And lastly, the formal operational stage. This begins at approximately age 11 and lasts into, into adulthood. During this time, they are able to ex exercise abstract logic and reasoning. Strategy and planning are now possible. Examples in the classroom include, include encouraging independent tasks, hands-on learning, and opportunities for discovery. A teacher should plan a variety of activities for the classroom that incorporate the different learning styles. The teacher should also get to know their students since each student develops at different times. In your classroom, you can use props and visual aids to promote learning. Give the students opportunities to classify and group information. And present brain teasers that require logical thinking. Our next theory we will be talking about is Instructional Classroom Management Theory of Jacob Koonin. Jacob Koonin was an educational psychologist who believed that teachers demonstrating effective instructional behaviors in and out of the classroom usually have better behaved students. He focused on the teacher's ability to affect student behavior through instructional management. His best known work was in the 1970s. Instructional management theory included, Kunin believed that teachers affect students' behaviors positively and negatively. Being an effective classroom manager means having clear transition between activities, knowing what is going on in the classroom at all times, and continually maintaining instructional momentum. Kunin is also the founder of the ripple effect. This occurs when the teacher corrects a misbehavior in one student. This positively influences the behavior of the other students. The effect is greater when the teacher clearly states, clearly names the unacceptable behavior and gives the reason to the students. For example, if somebody was running in the classroom, the teacher would state to student A that there is no running in the classroom, instructing the student to not run in the classroom and telling the other students that that will not be allowed. Kunin also developed theories about classroom management that were based around a teacher's ability to organize and plan in their classrooms while using proactive behavior. He believed in order for a teacher to have an effective connection between management and teaching, there needed to be good lesson movement. This lesson movement is achieved through with itness, overlapping, momentum, smoothness, and group focus. Five main points of Kunin's theory include with itness. A teacher who is, has the ability to effectively manage their classroom at all times. The teacher usually can spot problems before they happen. Overlapping is the ability to tend to more than one matter at a time. You use your body language, your position in the classroom, facial expressions, and hand gestures. Momentum is when a teacher can make lecture short so students can collaborate with a group. The teacher can use a timer to keep students on task. There are no breaks for students to mess around when you use a timer. When the timer goes off, then the kids either end their discussion or move on to the next topic. 
smoothness, using hand gestures to tell the teacher whether the student has a concern about the task being, being presented. Group focus is best when the teacher is organized, communicates expectations, and holds the students accountable for their actions. Examples in the classroom are the teacher can divide students. Some examples in the classroom include the teacher can divide students into groups that will rotate centers for a certain amount of time. Once the timer goes off, the students know how to move on to the next chap center. The teacher will already cover the material so the students will know what is expected of them at each station. Centers use the five stages by having direction, a visual state of knowing what to do at each station, what to do once the time is up at that station, and a way for teachers to see how students adapt to the centers. Centers are also great for students because centers are usually cut into short increments of time so students aren't bored or messing around. Centers usually last from 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the age group. Centers also, if, for example, we were talking about reading, would be a small group where we do reader's theater. Another one would be doing a brain break on the iPads. And the third center would be book work. These all are advancing the students' knowledge, yet keeping them on task. Another example would be taking attendance visually while monitoring students perform, performing a warm-up activity. This would be classified under the overlapping strategy. This strategy has the teacher doing two things at once and not having the students just sit in their seat waiting for the next step. A teacher should be prepared for the day because this will help the students transition from task to task. And hand signals is another way a teacher can do an informal assessment on the students after covering a certain topic. A thumbs up or thumbs down can tell the teacher if they understand what is being asked to them or if they understand the topic. This is also a quick and easy way to assess the topic without disrupting the class.